things that I do in my apartment. Uh, it's starting to get nicer outside. So if you guys have a throwing partner, obviously that's the most ideal is to be able to go outside and play catch with somebody, but that's not the case for everybody. So um, I'm just going to go over some exercises. And ultimately what this is, is it's a full day plan of what you should be doing as a pitcher. So um, a, lot of, a lot of times kids think that you can just go outside, play catch, and call it a day. But ideally, you know, you want to get your shoulder work in, your forearm work in, and your core work in because all of those things work together to make you a stronger pitcher, to make you a better pitcher. So we're going to go over some exercises. I'm just going to go down the list of what we're going to be talking about today, and then we're going to jump into it. So we're going to start with um, the static arm circles, forward and backwards. Everybody knows how to do those. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about forearm weights. The idea of forearm weights is to get your muscles activated and to get your forearm stronger so that you don't break down towards the back end of the season. Um, we're going to be talking about standing shoulder work, which is going to be, um, you know, th those cans that I talked to you guys about possibly bringing. Um, we're going to be doing some floor stretches. So some stuff to stretch out your legs. Obviously, your legs are a huge part of being a pitcher. Um, if we have softball players on here, same thing. I know you guys push off the mound like crazy with your legs. So if your legs are strong, that's going to make our arm healthy. Um, we're going to talk about some yoga push-ups, some range of motion stuff, uh, the towel work. Um, then we're going to talk about uh, the baseball in the baseball sock so that if you don't have a throwing partner, that's something that you can do inside, outside as an alternative. Um, and then we're going to jump into some drills. So one of the biggest things that I see is a lot of people leaving the mound early when they're throwing. So we're going to talk about some balance drills. We're going to talk about staying over the rubber. Um, we're going to be talking about where you should be feeling the pressure on your foot as a pitcher or as a thrower. Um, we're gonna do. We're gonna step it up a notch after we do the balance drill and talk about the tap drill. Um, once you start to master the balance drill, you can start making it a little bit more difficult for yourselves and and really feel your body moving and feeling your your lifting leg move in all different directions so that you have an idea of where your body's at over the rubber. And then we're gonna finish it up with some core. Um, I think that core is probably one of the most underrated things that pitchers need to be doing. Um, if you have a strong core, everything else is going to follow. So thanks for joining, guys, and, and let's get into it. So if everybody can take a step back, what we're going to start with is standing arm circles. So last week I talked about this. We're doing it for an exercise, right? We wanted to get a lot out of it. Today we're talking about more of a routine and a throwing routine, so we're just going to do it to get loose. So I want 15 seconds. We're gonna start with small arm circles going forward, and then we're gonna get big towards the last five seconds. All right, so let's go. All right, and then we're gonna go backwards, palms up. Starting small and getting big towards the end. All right, good. Now we're gonna do hugs. So the idea of this is to just let your arms loose. You want your arms to drop. If you're stiff, this is really not gonna be doing too much for you. So we're gonna drop our arms, make sure they're nice and loose, and we're just gonna hug ourselves. My right arm's going over top, and then my right arm's going underneath. We're gonna switch it now. We're gonna go up and down, same thing. All right, we're going to go dominant arm. So if you're a righty, you always want to start with your right arm. If you're a lefty, you want to start with your left arm. We're going to go across for 10 seconds. Stretch it out. Back with the left. Good. Back to the dominant arm, over top. And non-dominant.
Good, let's jump into some forearm stretches now. So we're gonna take our palm, keep it down, pull our fingertips back at us. My arm's staying locked out the whole time. We don't want our arm bending like this. We wanna keep it locked out so that we can feel that full forearm stretch. Stretch it out, non-dominant. All right, same thing, palm down, over top, pulling it down. Shake it out, non-dominant. All right, good. All right, guys, so when you guys are with your team, normally what we do is we do what's called a dynamic stretch. So that's where you do your high knees, you do your butt kicks. Um, all that stuff is made for you to loosen up your legs, get your blood flowing. Um, if we're inside, obviously we can't run around or we can't do the butt kicks and stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you guys what's called some static stretches. So we're gonna get a yoga mat or we're gonna just sit on the rug and we're gonna go over some things that we can stretch our legs out with so that when we do start to throw, our entire body is loosened up, not just our upper half, all right? All right, what we're gonna do is butterflies. So we're gonna put our bottom of our feet together. We're gonna pull them in as far as we can. We're gonna hold our toes and we're gonna push our knees down to the ground as hard as we can. We don't want it to hurt, but you want it to feel a good stretch. And do that for 10 seconds. All right, good. Now we're gonna go left leg out, right leg in, just like we were doing the butterflies. We're gonna take our left arm and reach out to our left toe. Hold that for 10 seconds. Good, switch it up. Good, all right, both legs out. We're gonna take our right knee and pull it to our chest. We're gonna lean back, but keep our left leg straight on the ground. So it's gonna look something like this. Pulling our knee right to our chest for 10 seconds. Good, switch it up. All right, everybody on their feet. Real simple, feet together, knees straight. We're gonna reach down to our toes, 10 seconds. Good, left leg, quad stretch, we're pulling it up. Right here, 10 seconds. All right, now we're gonna go right. All right, so what we've done so far is a lot of static stretching. So although we might not think it, we just worked on our balance a lot. Holding one leg up as a pitcher, a lot of the times when you lift your leg up, you need to have good balance. If you don't have good balance, you're gonna fall over. So when we were doing our quad stretches, if we find ourselves doing a couple of those, that's probably a sign that we need to work on our balance a little bit. So now that we've done that, we're gonna do a little bit of range of motion stuff and then we're gonna talk about getting into throwing. All right, so those of you who were with us last week, we're gonna do squat and rotate. 
So we're gonna get all the way down. Our heels are on the ground. The last thing we want is for us to lift up on our toes. So our heels are on the ground. Our left palm is on the ground. I'm gonna follow with my eyes, with my right arm, up to the sky. And I'm gonna keep going back and forth with my left, back to my right. We're gonna do five each side. Good. All right, the last one, we got yoga push-ups. So Coach Adam talked last week that when we do a push-up, we don't want our elbows out like this, right? We wanna keep them close to our body. So when we do this yoga push-up, it's a normal push-up like this. And then when we get to the top, we're gonna to push ourselves, we're gonna push our butt into the sky and tuck our head underneath our body. This is gonna help stretch out our back. We're gonna do six of those. All right, ready, go. Make sure you're pushing your heels to the ground when you get your butt up in the air. Good. Something to keep in mind when you guys are doing the yoga push-ups, it's not a race, right? So you don't want to try and knock out those push-ups as fast as you can. It's all about your range of motion. So as a pitcher, we're best when we can get our hand out in front of our body with the fingers on top of the ball. If our back's tight or our legs are tight, we're going to be stuck throwing the ball way back here. Okay, so everybody should feel a little bit looser after that. Their blood's flowing. Right now, we are going to get into towel work. So if you guys grab a dish towel, a pillowcase, something like that. I have a pillowcase. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it. I'm gonna fold it again. And I'm gonna fold it again. So I have a skinny long piece of cloth right here. So for those of you who can't throw outside right now or you don't have a throwing partner or you're not allowed out of the house, what we're gonna use is the towel. So we're gonna take the top of the towel. I'm gonna use my fingers like they're scissors. I'm gonna put them right there. And then this part right here is what I'm gonna be holding on to. So I'm never gonna let go of this part right here. So we're not actually throwing the towel, but we're gonna be going through the throwing motion and whipping the towel onto a chair, onto your couch, onto somebody else's glove. So let's do that right now. So the main goal of the towel drill is to feel where you wanna release the ball. So when I'm watching you guys do this, I wanna see everybody get here with the towel. Not way up here, not down here, but I wanna see everybody's fingers on top of the ball or on top of the towel and then whipping down out in front. So it should look something like this. All right, what that shows us is we're now practicing our mechanics, but we're also getting the repetitions in our arm for a time where we can't go to a facility or we can't practice with the team. So let's do 10 towel throws.
Let's see a couple more. I want to watch you guys. Okay, good. Okay, guys. Something that I'm seeing is when we're on the mound and we're throwing, or even if we're throwing across the diamond, where is this hand? Is it all the way down here? Is it stuck down here? Or is it nice and strong right here? So when we do the towel drill, it's ideal to have a glove in our hand, but if we don't have a glove in our hand, we're gonna have to be aware of what this hand is doing. So I asked you guys to grab a can, right? So grab your can, whatever it is, a water bottle, hold that in your left hand. Now when you're getting ready to use the towel, it's a little bit heavier, so we have to work harder to get our arm right here when we're throwing. It's gonna be a lot easier to just drop it here, but then our arm's gonna be stuck out here. So everybody show me right here. We don't even have to step. I'm in a nice athletic position. I have the can in my hand, I'm strong, and I'm pulling it right into my armpit. Let's do five like that. All right, everybody put down the can. Let's see if we can do it without the can. So same thing, I want that arm in a strong position right here, but I want it nice and loose. If we're tight, this is gonna be tight. So stay nice and fluid with this front arm. Good. All right. So right now, if we're stuck inside, and we can't throw, that is a good alternative to get your arm going. Now, I wouldn't say that that could be the only thing that you should be doing. You should be able to go outside, throw a baseball into a net if you have to. Like I said, ideally, if you have a, a friend or a teammate that lives close and you guys are allowed to play catch together, that would be even better. Another alternative, everybody grab your sock and your baseball. All right, so I got a nice long baseball sock here. I'm gonna take the baseball and I'm gonna put it into the sock. I'm gonna pull that sock up as, as high as it goes just to make sure that it doesn't come off my arm. So I know you guys can't see, but I'm holding a four seam grip right now. I'm holding a two seam grip. I'm holding a curveball and I'm holding a change up. So we're gonna take our four seam grip, we're gonna stay strong with that front side, and we're gonna throw the ball right into the sock and the sock is gonna hold the ball onto our hand. Just like that. Hey Coach Mike. What's up Coach? A couple of the kids are asking if can all can all position players be doing these exercises or are these just for pitchers? No, absolutely. So just like I said before, when you're throwing across the diamond or you're throwing on the mound, every single athlete on the baseball field, when they're getting ready to throw the baseball, their front side is right here. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times the pitchers develop bad habits of dropping their arm because as an infielder or an outfielder, you have to get rid of that ball so fast. Right. So we don't think too much about staying strong here. We can feel the ground ball and just get it going. You notice how my front side is down? Mm -hmm. So this is a great drill for pitchers, outfielders, infielders, softball players, because as an infielder, as a softball player, you have the exact same throwing motion as a baseball player. Right. Yep. Good. Now, obviously, when it comes to pitching in softball, it's going to be a little bit different, but – as far as the towel goes, what the towel is for is not only getting your mechanics down and feeling your arm go through the arm path, but it's about repetitions. So when we're inside and we take three, four, five, six days off of throwing, 
and we come back throwing, a lot of times our arms are sore. And it's because we're not used to picking up a baseball and throwing it like we are throughout the normal season. Perfect. So, I mean, softball players, if you can get a softball into a sock, same thing. It's no different. Even if you guys – I know you guys have a shorter arm action. So, if you guys want to practice being here Boom. and throwing, it's exactly the same. The ball is staying in the sock. The, the whole idea of the sock or the ball in the sock is getting a feeling of actually having a baseball or a softball in your hand. The towel is great because you can do that anywhere. You could, you know, a lot of times before I get on a mound, whether it's in spring training or it's in the off season, I usually go to a towel just to loosen up my arm. And we've gone over shoulder exercises. We've gone over forearm exercises. Um, I'm going to touch a little bit more on that right now, but after you do that stuff, you're tired or you're tight. So the, the towel or the sock, what that's meant to do is to loosen up all of your muscles so that when you do start throwing on a mound, you're good to go. Awesome. All right. So if you guys can grab a can, we're going to talk a little bit about forearm weights now. So those things that we just went over are great for inside, but obviously if you can get outside and throw into a net or if you can play catch with a buddy, that's definitely gonna be better. Um, so right now I have my pineapple slices, still haven't eaten them since last week. Um, we're just gonna go over some stuff to activate the forearm muscle. So we're gonna grab the can, we're gonna balance it right on our knee. Now notice when I'm doing these exercises, my my elbow isn't moving anywhere. I'm staying right on, my, right on my knee. A lot of times you see kids or people do this. Right, that's no good. Because now I'm using my bicep and my tricep to move this can. So I'm gonna keep my elbow right on my knee and I'm gonna do 20 of these up and down. Full range of motion. I'm not doing it real short like this but I'm extending my wrist as far as it goes, and then I'm curling my wrist as far as it goes. Duke, you're muted. Mike, do you see that? Yeah, somebody's writing something. Hey, Mr. Marshall, can you turn your screen off, please? Jack? Uh, I don't know how to get that off. <laughs> it says no one's allowed on. And he must. He's just. It just happened by accident, I guess. That's you recording. That's me recording. Um, stop video. Put in the waiting room. I'll put him in the waiting room and see. There you go. Okay. All right. So we're gonna talk about forearm weights. Um, elbow is gonna be staying on my knee the entire time. A lot of times you see the elbow coming off like this, right? Even if you have to, you can put your other hand on your elbow to make sure it stays down. And we want to do this exercise sitting down. So full flexion or full extension, full flexion. I'm going to do 20 of those. Good. All right, next, we're going to flip our hand over. We're going to do the same thing, up and down. Full extension, full flexion. And guys, we're doing this with our dominant arm. So if you're a righty, you're gonna to wanna to use your right arm. If you're a lefty, you're gonna to wanna to use your left arm. You can do it for both arms, um, but ultimately you wanna just make sure you get your dominant arm. Okay, good. Next, I'm gonna have my thumb on the inside, and my fingers on the outside. I'm just gonna twist. Again, look at my elbow. Staying right on my knee. The more range of motion you guys do, the more you're gonna feel this. So if I'm just going back and forth, I'm not getting anything out of this exercise. I wanna go all the way over, both sides.
Okay, good. So same thing. I'm gonna have my thumb on the inside and my fingers on the outside, like I'm hammering a nail. All right, good. Shoulders. All right, so I'm gonna have a nice athletic position. My feet about shoulder width. I'm gonna have each can in my hands. I'm gonna have my palms facing my legs. So not inside, not behind, but facing my legs. My arms are straight and I'm pinching my scaps back here. So I'm gonna pinch and then I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna do 12 of those. If you guys don't have cans, it's perfectly okay to just use your body weight. You don't need anything in your hands. Okay, good. So same thing, I'm gonna pinch my shoulder blades back. I'm gonna have my thumbs pointing at the camera and I'm gonna go straight up. Guys, it's really easy to get into the habit of when we're going straight up to take our backs instead of being pinched and folding them over like this. So we wanna stay pinched the entire time, going up and going down. Okay, good. Now, our palms are still facing inside. Thumbs forward. We're gonna go at a 45 degree angle. So we're not going straight up. We're not going straight out. But we're gonna go on diagonal. We don't want our hands going above our shoulders. So we're just gonna go up to our shoulders and down. Okay, good. All right, so after the forearm exercises, after the shoulder exercises, after the range of motion, after the stretching, after the towel work, right now we're about 20, 25 minutes in, and realistically, we really haven't even pick, picking up a ball yet. So that just shows you that there's a ton of stuff that you guys could be doing to getting your body in shape, getting your body ready to actually pick up a baseball. So next we're gonna talk about some drills that you guys can do. So let's say you just went outside and you played catch for 10 minutes or you, know, you threw the ball inside of the sock for 10 minutes or the towel drill for 10 minutes. Let's talk about some stuff that you can do to become a better pitcher on the mound. So one of the biggest issues that we see is Let's say I'm standing on the mound right now. This is, my, this is my foot that's connected to the mound and I'm getting ready to pitch. One of the biggest things that we see is when some, when, when some kid picks up their, their knee, they start drifting towards home plate without separating the ball from their glove. So the best drill that you guys can do to work on this is what I call the balance drill. So when I come up, I should be able to stand in this position for 20 seconds. So what I want everybody to do is mimic like you're on the mound. If you're a lefty, obviously, your left foot's gonna be your plant foot. If you're a righty, your right foot. I'm gonna come set, and I'm gonna hold this for 20 seconds. Go. Good. Okay, so the next move after that, a lot of people think is this, right? But before we start moving towards home plate, 
what we have to do is separate that ball from our glove. So let's just use, if we don't have a glove and we don't have a ball on us, let's use the can as our glove and we'll scrunch up, or we'll use the baseball. And we'll use the baseball in our throwing hand. Okay. So I have the can and I'm getting ready to throw the baseball. So I want everybody to practice this right here. We come up and we separate. I'm holding my balance and I'm getting the feeling of getting the ball out of my glove. Do that for 10 seconds. Okay, good. All right, let's get a little trickier now. So we all get that we have to balance. We all get that we have to separate, but let's see if we can move our leg without losing our balance now. So the balance drill is something that you guys can do before you go to sleep. You can do it after you're done stretching. You can do it all day long because you can't have good enough balance on the mound. The better balance you have, the more strikes you're gonna throw. So after we've mastered balancing, I wanna see you guys lift up and then just tap behind you, but keeping your balance. What this is doing is it's giving your body an idea of your leg moving, but still balancing. So instead of just lifting our leg up and having to hold our balance, now we have to hold our balance with our leg going up and down like it's going to in our motion. So let's do 10 touches. One, it's a real fast touch. I don't wanna hold it down and then come back up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, last thing. We're gonna come up, we're gonna to touch, then we're gonna separate before we go moving forward. So it's gonna look something like this. Up, touch, up, separate, go forward. Again, we're avoiding doing this. And the reason why we wanna separate our hands early is because if we don't, we're gonna get caught in this position right here when we land. Right, you see how the ball is all the way down here? Whether you're an infielder, an outfielder, um, an infielder or outfielder for softball, a catcher, a pitcher, the power position at throwing is right here. So if we're late to separate, by the time our front foot lands, we're not in that power position. Our arm is stuck down here. So a lot of times you're gonna see those high misses or you're gonna see the balls that get spiked into the ground. Especially when we talk about curve balls or change ups and pitches that you really have to have a lot of feel for. If your arm is trailing on those pitches, it's gonna be really difficult to keep your fingers on top of the ball and behind the ball. And then the last drill that I'll leave you guys with is the curveball drill. So if you want to learn how to throw a curveball, the best way to throw an effective curveball is to have your fingers on top. So everybody grab your towel or your pillowcase. And then we're going to grab the can in our glove arm or our glove hand. So what I'm doing here is I still have a four seam grip. You can throw a curveball with a four seam grip, but the curveball turns right here. It doesn't turn all the way back here. It doesn't turn up here. It turns out in front. So what we're gonna teach ourselves right here is I'm gonna have fast, I'm gonna have my two fingers. I'm gonna separate with my strong front side and I'm gonna get over this front knee right here. And again, 
We don't want to turn our pitch into a curveball until we get all the way out in front. If we turn it over back here, it's going to be super inconsistent. We're going to throw some really good curveballs, but a lot of the times we're not going to be able to put it in the strike zone. So again, strong front side, turn over late over that front knee. Look at where my extension is now. It's not all the way up here. If I want to get over this front knee, I have to get that extension all the way out here. We're going to do three more. Okay, good. All right, guys. So that is just a handful of different exercises, different range of motion exercises, different stretching exercises that you guys can do at home. Um, there's really no excuse for not picking up a towel or picking up a sock with a baseball in it at least every single day. Um, those things are what's going to make you a better pitcher. When your coach finally calls you and says, hey, guys, season's on, you guys are going to be the ones that have been practicing every single day for the last couple months when there's a lot of kids that think, oh, the season's not going to happen this year. So um, write those things down, watch the video over, and help yourself create a routine every single day that you can get better. If you, didn't, if you need to work on your off-speed pitches, towel drill over the front knee. If you need to work on getting the ball down and being more consistent in the zone, work on that balance drill. Just take some videos, see where you guys are at. But um, I wish you guys all the best of luck this season if we have one. And if not, go get them next season. Hey, Coach Mike, um, everyone's all fired up. We, we hit the limit. We hit about 130 people. It stops at 100. But when, when are you going to be on next? When, when are you going to be on next? Maybe next Thursday or Friday? I'll tell you what, next Thursday or Friday, um, everybody that's in this chat room right now, I want you guys to come back and everybody write in the chat room what you guys have been working on, what you guys are struggling with, or something that you need to work on that maybe the exercises that we went over today aren't quite taken care of. And we'll brainstorm over at Zone and we'll, uh, and we'll get back to you guys, whether it's on video next week or it takes us a couple days to, to get something together to help you guys out. But we want you guys to give us as much feedback as possible um, so that we can help you. We obviously know that it's, it's tough right now not being able to practice with the team, but there's definitely no excuse for not practicing at all. Awesome. Well, Coach, uh, Coach Steve's going to come on now. I'm going to make sure that everybody writes down any questions in the chat box for, you know, for us to talk about later and we can answer those. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get I'll back to I'll it. tell you what, I'll, I'll stay on. And anybody who has any questions, I'll answer them in the chat. And then uh, I'll watch Coach Steve give his, his, uh, his lesson. That's perfect. All right, cool. Thanks again, Coach Mike. That was awesome. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. All righty. Let me find Coach Steve on here. Coach Steve, I know you're on here somewhere. There you are. All right. Hold on one second. Coach Steve, Steve. Is, Coach Steve is going to be in the house. We're going to paste him on the spotlight video. All right, Coach Steve, take us away. Nice. Mike, thanks as always, buddy. That was really good. Um, guys, uh, first of all, we really, really appreciate everybody jumping on here. That's awesome. And uh, we appreciate the hard work coming from you guys. Um, if you guys have printed out your calendar and started filling in the days, give me a thumbs up. We sent out a calendar last week. Remember, it looks like this. Our, our calendar with M, P, and S. Your mental, your physical, and your skill. Don't forget to fill this thing out. Remember, this is your accountability partner. Every day, you write down exactly what you do. Just like Coach Mike said, if you want to be ready for the season and you want to be ready in a couple weeks, hopefully, when uh, somebody finally does say, say play ball, you want to make sure that uh, you can look back on that calendar and see you did stuff every single day to get better. Um, for me today, you know, I think a, a tough thing for all of us to do is, is getting creative at home. And how can we get creative and, and do workouts with, you know, minimal equipment with uh, maybe not a throwing partner, maybe not a batting cage to hit in. It might just be you and mom and dad or you and your brother. But uh, I think you saw Coach Mike using 
using a can there, using a sock, using a towel. It's on us right now to really get creative with, uh, with our training. Um, you know, two days ago, Duke and I came in and we shot 67 videos on how to play wall ball, right? Because a lot of us, that's all we have. We have a tennis ball and a, and a garage or, you know, you're in your basement. There's plenty of things that you guys can be doing right now to, to practice your training. So we shot 67 videos on infield play, outfield play, PFPs, catching work, just using a wall and a tennis ball. Uh, so you guys can get creative. You can work on your slow rollers. You can work on your double play turns. First baseman, you can work on your pick work. There's really no limit to what you guys can do <clears throat> on your own. Um, I highly encourage going back onto YouTube and watching the previous Zoom calls. You know, Adam's done a great job with, with our weekly workouts. You guys can go, go in there every single day. I know he's not on every day, but you can make sure you get your 15, 20-minute workout in. Um, you know, I saw two great videos this week online that I want you guys to, uh, to either think about or, you know, try to do on your own. But I saw an infielder, and he was watching the Yankee game. It was the Yankees versus uh, – it was the Yankees versus Red Sox last night. I'm not sure what, what game he had on TV, but he's standing in the middle of his living room and he's watching the pitcher deliver the pitch and he's actually going through his prep step and his timing, pretending he's the center fielder. The camera was coming right from center field and he's working on his prep step and whichever way the ball was hit, he's jab stepping and moving that way. It sounds funny, but that's a great drill that you guys can do right in your living room. You're an infielder, pretend you're playing shortstop, get in front of the TV, right, left, work on that little hop, work on your prep step and work on your timing, you know, just like you would do at practice or just like you would do in the game. I saw another one. You guys probably saw it too. The guy was playing, uh, he was on video, uh, on one of his video games. I don't know what it was. It might've been like, like Wii baseball or I don't think it was MLB the show, but he's standing in front of the TV and he's practice, practicing his load and his swing off of a video game. You guys can do the same thing. You can go on YouTube and type in your favorite pitcher. Uh, you can go on YouTube and find a clip of Coach Mike and pretend you're hitting a bomb off him. Stand in the living room, grab your bat, and work on your timing while that pitcher is actually delivering the pitch. It sounds funny, but shadowing, working on that rhythm, working on that timing, that's the kind of stuff we do in the on-deck circle. It's the stuff we do during practice, and uh, it's a great way to just get that rhythm and get that whole routine down like you'd normally do in the batter's box. Um, you know, we look at this whole situation now, being stuck at home, not being able to see your teammates, not being able to go to school, not, not going to practice. And there's really two things we can do. We can either feel sorry for ourselves, we can sit around and do nothing all day, or we can make the most of it. And, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity for you guys that are developing your game to identify one part of your game that you want to get better at and use this as an extra little spring training. Use it as a couple extra weeks to really refine your skills. Let's say you're an infielder and, you, you know, you're not that great at fielding a backhand. Well, I would work every single day on fielding a backhand. So in three weeks from now, when we're out playing, you're ready to go. If you're, if you're somebody that isn't very fast, work on your speed work. If you need to get stronger, get stronger. But it's completely up to you guys. And uh, it's the reason why we created this checklist. This way it gives you a little bit of an accountability partner. But I think it, it's good to write down goals and uh, to hold yourself accountable. But use this, use this time at home. You know, spend time with your family, enjoy it. It's not, it's not time that we get very often. And don't, don't look at this as just a negative. Use it as an opportunity to get better, to uh, develop parts of your game. And uh, hopefully a couple of weeks from now, a month from now, when we're able to get back out, we're, uh, we're ready to go and we're firing on all, all cylinders. Um, no one's stopping us. I know Mike, Mikey said, go outside and throw into a net. If you don't have a net, get creative and make a makeshift net. I mean, we used to do stuff where we'd, we'd, we'd take a lawn chair and put a, like the, the padding to the lawn chair, and that's our home plate. That's our strike zone. You know, go out there and throw into that. Uh, I was at Coach Duke's house, and we were hitting sock balls into the side of the house. You know, grab a sheet and hang it from, from the trees and long toss into that. There's no excuse for, for us to not be throwing or hitting or really doing anything we can to get better right now. Uh, last week, Coach Eric was on, and he was talking about our approach at the plate, and He's talking about different counts, different pitches, and different situations, and, and what are we thinking about up at the plate with no strikes or one strike or two strikes. And, uh, you know, there's no better time than right now to really come up with a routine. And what I, what I mean by routine is, you know, what's your, what's your uh, routine from the time you leave the on-deck circle to how you walk into home plate? 
Do you tap home plate? Do you take a practice swing? You know, this is a time right now where you guys have a lot of time to develop your own routine to, to create some consistency every single time you get into the batter's box. I mean, we grew up Yankee fans. I watched Derek Jeter from 1995 until, you know, 20 years later. He did the exact same thing from the time he left the on-deck circle to how he walked to home plate to how he stood in the batter's box to his practice because that creates his, you know, his comfortable, comfortable place. If you get into the batter's box, you're doing something different every time. You're thinking about something different every time. It's, it's difficult to be consistent. And, uh, you know, I, I always looked up to him as a role model, but this is a great time for you guys. Create your own routine. Visualize. You know, visualization is huge. Get up, you know, get up to a, a pretend batter's box in your backyard and pretend like you're hitting a double to right center field. You know, visualize your routine and uh, your approach at the plate and do whatever you got to do to get ready. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys watched playoff baseball last year. One thing that stood out to me was Clayton Kershaw. Probably – one of the best, if not the best, left-handed pitchers in baseball. And they're in the playoffs, and he's the only guy in the stadium. And he's out in the bullpen by himself. He's got shorts and a T-shirt on, and he's going through his mechanics just with his glove, no ball. There's no catcher there. There's nobody there, but the, 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 the video guy was there, and he was video, videotaping him. And he's going through his mechanics and his rhythm, practicing holding runners on, practicing going through his windup from the stretch, working on all his different pitches, without a catcher, without a ball, without anything. And this is, this is a big leaguer focusing on the basics. He was just somebody that, that, that was out in the bullpen visualizing. He had his eyes closed. That's something we can be doing every day, um, you know, to, to, to build up that confidence level for us. But, uh, you know, that's something I think is huge. Again, there, there's nobody stopping you from, from practicing and getting your work in at home. And uh, a little bit of change of topic for me just to, just to close off here. Uh, starting at the end of next week, I know we can all use a little bit of competition in our life and we can use some challenges. So coach Eric and I were talking about doing a, uh, doing a running challenge for everybody that wants to. So basically what you can do is you can go onto your phone, you can download map my run. It's a free app by under armor and I'll have more details. I'll, I'll shoot out an email to all you guys on Monday, but what we'll do is we'll set up teams, coaches, players there's no age restrictions and all we'll do is we'll all down we'll all download the app we'll sign into the app and then i'll break us up into let's say there's 50 people we'll have five teams of 10 guys and we're going to log our miles or log whatever we ran that day and we'll make a competition out of it so every single friday we'll log back in here we'll talk about you know the 10 guys that won for that week and then we'll make new teams for the for, for the following week but it's a fun way to stay in shape it's a fun way to keep your legs moving and and practice running outside. I know not, of all, not all of us love running. Uh, I was never a, a huge fan of running up until about two years ago, but it's just a great way for, uh, for us to create a little bit of competition amongst all of us, at zone, not at zone, players, parents, anybody can join. And uh, we'll have some fun with it. We'll create a little competition. We'll stay in shape, and we'll make sure uh, three weeks from now or a month from now when somebody says play ball, we're all ready to rock. Dukes, do you got anything? Any questions on there? Uh -uh, no real questions on here. Um, a lot of them were from Mikey. Uh, Kevin Penny said, what about bike riding? No, that Penny, that doesn't count. That's cheating. <laughs> no bike riding. That's, that's, uh, that's, health, that's healthy practice, but that's not part of the, part of the challenge. Uh, yes, yeah, Steve, well, that was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, any words of wisdom as we head off into the weekend? That's it. Um, I mean, the days are kind of blending together, but I wouldn't take any days off. I would, I would get outside. I would do something this weekend. Uh, I know the weather's not looking great. I think this week, Sunday and Wednesday look good here in New Jersey. I'm not sure where you guys are all. I know there's some people on here from all over the country, but Sunday and Wednesday this week, plan on getting outside. So uh, maybe schedule some, some nice workouts for yourself, get some exercise in, but don't take any days off. If you, if you didn't get it yet, let us know. But print this baby out and start filling it out every single day. Write down what you're doing. And I promise a couple weeks from now, you'll, you'll really feel a sense of accomplishment for, for all the stuff that you've done. Coach Mike, did you have something, Mike? He's muted. Look like, yeah, I just, I just. All right. Yeah. Um, just somebody asked Steve uh, if you could send the name of the app into the chat so that they have it. Yep. I'll do it right now. 
And then I know that we were going to talk about some core stuff, but to be honest with you guys, a lot of the things that we did today with the towel drill, with um, the one knee working on the curveball, I know some people were asking, you know, how can I help my my player at their landing point? Well, regardless if you're, if you're throwing a curveball, a change up, a fastball, if you're a catcher, you still need to get your chest out in front over that front knee. Um, so we, we use that drill for a curveball just because – a lot of the times that's the pitch that people forget about getting out in front, but you can use that, that drill for a fastball, a changeup, a curveball. Um, it really doesn't matter. Then the outfielders that we're asking, um, I would say the biggest thing that I could say would be to try and ride your back leg as long as possible, uh, especially when you have to throw the ball to third base from the outfielder or to home plate or hit your cutoff. Um, the more that you can stay behind the ball and stay on top of the ball, the more flight you're going to get out of it. So try not to, to spin off as you're throwing the ball and try and get that chest over the front knee. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, as always, this finishes up and concludes the week. You guys did a great job. I see a lot of, a lot of faces that came every single day. And like coach Steve and I always say, sometimes you can't come every day, but you know, when you guys can come on, that's awesome. Take little things every single time. Make sure you guys are working on this stuff. And uh, you know, we'll see you. Well, uh, we'll see you next week, next Monday. Four o'clock every single day next week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Whether I send an email out or not, four o'clock. This is the link. Log in, and uh, I'll make sure that we can we can allow more uh, participants because it maxes out at a hundred, and that happened really fast today. So um, I'll see how I can get more people on there so we can you know get get more people on. But great job, and if you guys as always leave questions in here, and that's what we'll utilize next week as our game plan. So whatever you guys, you know, want to know or have questions about, leave them in the, the comments and in the chat. It'll be good to go. All right, guys. Thumbs yeah, up. Thank you guys very much. Give a thumb up. Give an air high five. Great job. See you guys. Be safe. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming on today. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Everyone's shutting down. All right. Baseball 17. What's up? See you later, man. Have a good weekend. See you guys. See you, Brody. All right, Logie, see you. Good seeing you guys. Take care. Later, Brandon. Thanks, Juan. Thanks for coming on.